Hey, what's going on, y'all? That is my second video for the day. I did one earlier, but I was inside. I felt the Spirit of God put something else on my mind and uh, moved me to go ahead and make a video on this. So, here I am. This video is on trusting God and thanking Him for favoring you through your tough situations. You know, in life, we're going to have to face hard times. This is uh, an inevitable pain, suffering. It's a part of existing in this fallen state. It's a curse that we have been uh, placed under by Adam to be conscious of the fact that there is good and evil. We're conscious of the fact that we have to go through all these things. You know, animals, they don't have to be so aware. They don't have to be so uh, cognizant of the fact that they're here right now. But we're here. And we're doing it. And we know what we're doing. And so we got we to, as we go through these things, we're going to go through unpleasant times. We're going to have hardships in our lives and you know it's just like being on a ship or sailing on this long journey like we're gonna have to go through and we have to thank God for giving us the provisions thank God for giving us the spiritual gifts the wherewithal to get through it you know uh, I was reading the story of Joseph earlier and you know, God just moved it on my mind. He even showed me two other people talking about it today. So I know it was very, uh, he, it was something he was trying to direct me towards. And the thing with Joseph is he went through a lot of hard times in his life. And he kept faith with God. It mentions a lot that he kept faith with God throughout. He trusted God to be faithful to him. And it's that trust that got him to where he ended up, to being <laughs> nearly the ruler of all Egypt, next to Pharaoh. And throughout his whole story, we never see Joseph kind of complain and question God like we do with Job. You know, in, in, a, in a way, we can imagine him being this very humble, thankful man. But you never see him really questioning God like whenever he, his brothers, he's getting these dreams, he's feeling good, and his brothers are getting envious of him. He's not like, God, why can't they just see it my way? You know, and when they throw him in a pit, he's not like, God. They've cast me down into this bottomless pit. Why? Why am I here right now? You know, he's not, he's not, he, you know, whenever he got sold into slavery, he's not like, God, why am I in slavery? It doesn't say that in the Bible. It says that he understood that God was looking out for him. It says that God had his hand over his life. And that because of that, other people saw that and were like, okay, well, we need to trust him to handle things because if God's trusting him, if God's favoring him, then I need that favor working for me. And people saw that favor, and Joseph trusted in that favor, even when everything was against him. Even when all of life was, you know, pitted at him. Things, things seemed like they couldn't get worse. God provided a way for him to success. God provided a way for him through those hard times to where God wanted him to be. And God favored him in those hard times. That's important to note, that during those hard experiences, God showed him favor. God showed him love. God showed him provision. You know, it says that during these times, other people noticed him. When he was uh, in Potiphar's house, when he was a slave to Potiphar, Potiphar saw that God blessed everything that touched, that, that, just, just, that Joseph's hands touched. And so he's like, listen, yeah, that's going to work for me. In fact, if everything you touch gets blessed, why don't you essentially be right next to me and be my right hand man so that my whole establishment gets blessed? You know, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty logical way of thinking about it. And, you know, he, he treated him with it. He saw that. But again, God favored Joseph. Even though he was a slave, God gave him favor. And because, listen, this Potiphar might have been working out from a vain ambition, but he still elevated Joseph. God still had Joseph elevated to a wonderful position just because he favored him. And it really, I think, partly is because we don't see Job, I mean, not Job, we do see Job complaining. We don't see Joseph complaining. We see Joseph being dedicated. We see Joseph being aligned. We see Joseph showing life. And it's that life, that life, uh, and, and that, that, you know, that, that consistency, that willingness to continue on, that determination. We don't see Joseph ever just sitting down and, and complaining. We see him moving forward. And clearly, if, if everything his hands are touching are being blessed, He's touching things. He's active. He's getting the work done. And he's not, he's not, he's not, you know, brooding and he's not complaining to the side. It's something that I'm getting a little convicted on because this is something that I've been up to, you know. 
we have to we have to really be active for the kingdom even when things see, um, seem hard and even if it's not even kingdom work but it's just active work just to keep ourselves alive just to keep ourselves going through this situation trusting that God will show us that favor and keeping on keeping on God will get us through that valley you know there's going to be peaks and valleys in this life and is when we can trust when we can look and say wow okay you know yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me god's gonna be with us you know there's a great verse joshua 1 9 have i not commanded thee be strong and of a good courage if neither be uh, be not afraid neither uh, neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest and that's the verse i keep by me because it's like god's gonna be with you wherever you are you know you, you are with me. My, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's like his presence and, 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 and just his, his, his authority. It's comforting that he has this ability to control all things. He has the power over the whole universe. It's, it's just it's a, it's a very comforting thought. And if we have that faith, if we have that belief, if we have that love for God, he will show us favor that will take us through that hard time. Not just favor in that hard time, but favor to get us through that and elevate us to the next position, you know. And think about this, you know, when he was in the prison, you know, you know, was he was he whining and complaining? No, he, he was he saying, God, you know, how could you do this to me? How could you have this happen? He said, OK, I'm here now. And God still blessed him when he was in the prison. And the head of the, the warden was like, sheesh, you know, what? Why don't, why don't I just make this guy pretty much the head of all the prisoners? You know, God elevated him wherever he was at because he had favor for him. God's favor was on his life. And we have to trust, we have to have faith that God is gonna favor us through those bad times, through those hardships and get us on the other side. And that wherever he takes us, even if it seems to be a worse place, that might be the place that shoots you to the very top, all the way up to where you're supposed to be, your kingdom position, you know? And that's really what we have to be focused on, moving toward our kingdom position and trusting that God's gonna get us there no matter we know where we're at in our lives right now you know and it's like think about it he went from the bottomless prison to the top to the very tip top to right next to pharaoh not next to potiphar who was pharaoh's captain no no right next to pharaoh himself because he trusted in god's favor for his life because he acted and he kept doing god's will even when things seemed to be all the way against him and again it's just having that faith in our own lives that can instill us with God's favor that will get us through those hardships for ourselves. A great lesson to be learned from uh, the story of Joseph. And I pray that, uh, that y'all were able to, to you know, get a piece of that for yourself, a piece of bread from this, because you know, God's always given us this bread. I feel like the whole Joseph story for myself was a piece of bread, the daily bread. And there's this concept of bread. A lot of people think you know, when, when we're speaking about that, it's literally the word of God. And sometimes it is, but in the word of God, there's going to be a specific word uh, that stands out to us. I heard this from another pastor, uh, house church ministry, something like that. But there's going to be a specific word of God that is not just the word of God, as it says in, 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 a, in a logical sense, but the word of God that is a living word of God. And in the Bible, you'll, you'll find in the original translations, there are, there's the Greek, the original, um, the rhema, which is, the word of God as it is in the book, but what you, what you should also be seeking is, or I, excuse me, the logos, which is the word of God as it says in the book. But what we should be seeking is the rhema, which is the living word of God. It's these little things that he'll drop into our mind. It's these little bits of, uh, you know, like it'll be an impression of what you should do for the day. You know, it's like, okay, and you test the spirit, you see that came from God, it's the Holy Spirit, all right, you act on that. Or sometimes it's when you open the Bible and, and you're reading through passages, but a specific piece stands out to you. Yeah, you, know, you put it like this, like, don't just, don't just, you know, bulldoze over that and keep on reading, like, pull in and focus on what God has for you. Because, you know, in Matthew's, when, when he says, give us this day our daily bread, he's not just saying, you know, our physical bread. He's not just saying, you know, you know, give, let, this day, let me, give me my you know, two chapters that I'm supposed to read out of the book. No, God's giving you a specific personal word that is designed just for you. And I think I mentioned this in the last video. It's like, if, if there is a designer and creator of the universe, would you not trust that he has a specific design and creation and mind plan for your life specifically? If he's doing it for the little bugs and beetles, can you not think he's doing it for you? And it's that kind of trust, again, that gets us through those hard scenarios, trusting that he has a divine plan, a designed, ordained, anointed mission for our lives. If only we just continue to trust him and continue to act in the things that he wants us to do and, and really just, you know, 
follow the instructions that he's given us, be obedient to him, and receive those instructions and receive those directions, God can get us to where we're supposed to be. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for having me here today. I thank you, God, for allowing me to just be present, to uh, be able to share your word and, and to share just just your presence and, 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 and your wonderful truth with the world. I hope you guys have a blessed day and uh, you keep on keeping on. God bless and shalom.